I'm Jake Bossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Looking Grove, and we have a very special guest with us today. Randy Taylor with uh, Ag Engineering here at Oklahoma State University. Okay, so Dr. Taylor, my question for you today is, you know, we just bought a new research tractor. This sucker can pick the implement up when you approach the headlands, it can select the gear ratio, you can, you can tell what RPM you want it to run, it will turn itself around, put the implement back down, and then, you know, upshift on its own. You can program all that. So to me, it's like it's almost fully autonomous, almost. On top of that, you know, uh, in our geography, particularly when you're away from the big cities, finding qualified labor can be very difficult, right? So it's almost like we're there, you know, to solve our labor shortages, but what's what's really standing in our way when it comes to fully autonomous tractors? Well, I think, you know, first off, I don't think it's just your geography that's, this, you know, the shortage of labor, sure. qualified labor to run that equipment and, and work is it's probably one of the biggest topics that, that we hear a, a lot. Uh, and so the tractor itself, you know, like I said, it's 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 there because it, it, everything gets built in pieces, you know, as far as, our, as the technology gets, uh, you know, developed. We get auto steer, and then, then we get the ability to do implement, you know, work, and then, and then it's the turning, and so you program it all in. But you still have to have somebody sitting in the seat. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and still that person is sitting in the seat, needs to know they may not need to know a lot about everything else but they need to know how to run the computer that's in the tractor yes. and and all of that so that's uh that's uh, skilled labor yes and so the things that are holding us back right now is, is probably uh, a little bit of customer acceptance and i'll loosely call that uh cost sure <laughs> you know if if uh if, if, if the cost was lower to have you know autonomy then, then I think we would have more of it. Uh, and then probably some liability as well, when you look at that piece of equipment and it's operating in the field, uh, you know, there's, there's some risk involved in that. And it's funny you say cost and you mention that because while our research tractor can do all that, there's a bunch of unlock fees. And I said, well, we don't quite need all that. So, yeah. you know, the, a lot of farmers probably think that too. There is cost associated with it. Yeah, and so you have to do that. There's also, no, let's just say let's say it was you know autonomous and uh, fully and, and you just say uh, you plug in your map you know or, or not even plug it in anymore you just download it from uh, you know from the cloud and now it knows what to do all you do is start it probably with a remote switch or something maybe you're not even at the field and you start it uh, but then when you get the safety overrides built in which you have to have because of, of the risk part of it what do you do when it stops? Maybe a row plugs and it doesn't know what to do on the planter. And so the, the thing is, what you would do as an operator is you would stop and repair it. Uh, and, uh, but it's not going to repair it, so it's just going to stop. A similar issue that I've thought about is what happens if you do fall tillage, you have a big rain event over the winter, and all of a sudden you have a, a washout. Mm -hmm. You as a human operator could judge to know, can I cross this or not? How does a tractor do that? You know, is the technology there to do that? Yeah, you, I mean, you, you've got sensors that go on front, LIDAR or other things like that, laser scanning type of technology that could detect that. But then it's, you know, it's gonna say, if it's not built into the system, it's gonna stop. And so when it stops, the question becomes, how many times are you as the owner willing to go restart it? Figure out what the problem is, restart it, before you say, I'm just going to sell the tractor. Sure, right, right, you know, absolutely. Because you're there and you, and, and you can solve those problems yourself within the field. The other thing that I personally thought about is, let's say we have this gully situation from washout. Let's say the tractor decides it's in a crossover, mm -hmm. but let's say the tractor's wrong, and all of a sudden we have our you know, million dollar autonomous tractor in a wreck. Whose fault is it? Yeah. I mean, well, that's back to the liability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and certainly manufacturers are going to protect themselves against that because uh, again the, the the liability there if you look at uh, you know uh, some of the cars driverless cars or the or, or the, the, the auto steer or whatever it is on, on, the, on the Teslas and some things like that uh, the autopilot I guess that, that they have uh, what if it's detecting the wrong thing yes you know and so when we've got that and those are cars driving down the road with me and you 
you know, it's not in the field over here working by itself. Sure. And yeah. so, so there's some of those things I think that have to be ironed out and, and that, that people will have to, that, that the industry has to figure out. But I think, I, I don't see the labor thing changing. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, and so with that, I think it pushes us, accelerates the autonomy uh, a little faster just, just because of, of the labor issues. All right, sounds great. Well, Dr. Taylor, I certainly thank your time. It was good to see you again. And uh, thank you for participating in our video today. You bet, it was my pleasure. Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.